Hi Leute, mein Name ist Brian Clough. Oh, wartet. Ich bin gar nicht Brian Clough. Aber wir sind heute auf 1.9.202.1.7.134. Und willkommen zurück zur Dauerwerbesendung für diesen Vanilla-Server. Ähm, ja, also das Experiment ist ongoing mit, mit der Performance hier. Ähm, der Server läuft immer noch auf meinem Laptop. Ähm, genau, mein Laptop lief über die Nacht und es ging alles gut. Also vielleicht werde ich doch äh, Langzeit auf meinen Laptop umsteigen, um hier äh, bessere Performance äh, garantieren zu können. Und sobald ich das mit meinem Laptop nicht mehr halten kann, werde ich den wieder normal auf meinem äh, Kartoffelrechenzentrum-Gerät laufen lassen, um wieder... Ähm, Abteilen garantieren zu können. Aber bisher gab es noch keine Incidents und der Server war die ganze Zeit up and running. Genau. Ich glaube, letzte Folge, die ich hochgeladen habe, war dieses fette Battle mit Lide. Ich habe keine Ahnung, wie man seinen Namen ausspricht. Aber ich habe gestern noch ein bisschen ähm, rumgetestet und mal zum Spawn geschaut. Und das, was ich befürchtet hatte, war wahr. Der Dude hat es geschafft, den ganzen Spawn in Lava zu ähm, covern und meine, mein deutscher Watch hat es echt nicht mehr existent. Ähm, dementsprechend sind alle neuen Spieler einfach in der Lava gestorben ähm, und konnten dem Spawn echt beim besten Willen nicht entkommen. Was natürlich sehr ungünstig ist. Und dann habe ich festgestellt, dass man in Vanilla tatsächlich mit äh, Game Rules die, den Spawn-Radius vergrößern kann. Also Gott sei Dank eine Sache, die man hier äh, anarchiemäßig supporten kann ohne Plugins, ist ein größerer Spawn-Radius. Also ist sehr wichtig, der Spawn-Radius sollte jetzt groß genug sein, ähm, dass man das nicht so einfach irgendwie in Lava covern kann, dass man dann nicht so einfach in Obsidian Tiefigtum rummachen kann, dass man an sich nicht so einfach den, den ganzen Spawn trappen kann. Aber es soll, das Spawnradius sollte immer noch klein genug sein, dass man, wenn man zu zweit hier startet, mit ein bisschen rumlaufen und Koordinaten sich auch findet. Ne? Okay, ja, so viel dazu. Also vielen Dank an den Power-User Lide für... Ähm, naja, für das Aufzeigen der, der Limits dieses Servers. Ähm, genau, sonst habe ich noch ein bisschen gestern AFK gefarmt hier in der Goldfarm. Ähm, wie man sieht, das geht hier schon ziemlich ab. 64 Ingots. Ähm, ja, starkes Teil auf jeden Fall. Sehr effizient. Und ähm, ich würde sagen, wir machen einfach ein bisschen weiter, farmen hier rum, hoffen, dass Lidl nicht vorbeikommt und die ganze Base zersnackt. Und währenddessen schauen wir mal wieder was von Aaron Jones. Ey, ich habe voll Bock mal wieder was von Aaron Jones zu schauen. Es war doch interessant teilweise diese ganzen Lizenzvideos zu schauen, aber Jungs, äh, das war schon eine trockene und harte Zeit teilweise. Da sind wir wieder zurück bei unserem Entertainment Boss. Und Aaron Jones, redet, äh, Aaron Jones redet heute mal über Social Media Safety. Also da bin ich sehr gespannt, weil das wahrscheinlich ein weniger redundantes Thema ist und der wird wahrscheinlich nicht seine immer, immer gleichen Floskeln hier auspacken, wenn es äh, um, um Media Safety geht. Und ähm, deswegen, ja, freue ich mich ganz besonders auf dieses Video. Ich hatte doch irgendwie Eisentöne oder Leute. Ah ja, ich habe die zwei dahin und die dahin und ja, okay, hier könnte man auch mal eine hinmachen. Ja, ähm, dann würde ich sagen, äh, Natürlich gibt es hier auch eine Domain zu dem Minecraft-Server, auf dem wir sind. Das ist natürlich wie immer eine Dauerwerbesendung. Ähm, IP und Domain sind natürlich wie immer in der Videobeschreibung. Genauso wie das Video von Aaron Jones, was wir uns jetzt reinziehen werden, ist natürlich auch in der Beschreibung. Ähm, schaut doch mal bitte auf seinem Channel vorbei, so viele Klicks, wie wir hier abgesnackt haben. Wie gesagt, manchmal denke ich selber, dass ich Brian Clough bin, weil ich fast diesen ganzen YouTube-Channel hier bei mir geuploadet habe mit schlechter Soundqualität, wenn ich es im Hintergrund abgespielt habe. Ne? Ähm, ja, würde ich sagen, let's go! Seid ihr im Hype? Ich bin im Hype. So, mein Name ist Aaron Jones, für die, die nicht wissen. Ich arbeite im Chandler Police Department, aber ich bin nicht das Chandler Police Department heute Abend. Ich bin ein Software-Developer. I have a master's in intelligence analysis, and in addition to that, I have a focus on cybersecurity. 
So let's go ahead and start with our social media safety, just like we've given the officer. At the conclusion of this course, you'll be able to identify at least one safety concern with social media. Generally, this is relevant to law enforcement, but it is also relevant to the public. We're going to learn what settings to manage to enhance social media security why some of these settings don't matter as much as you think they do. And then we're going to describe one event relevant to social media that has affected law enforcement. Now some of you have already seen this, but after I gave this presentation last time to the public, a gentleman who used to work at Google came to me and told me that this was a really, really good talk, but if, he, if I'd like, he wanted to tell me some stories that I could use for later, and he told me about some additional stuff in here that uh, sort of expounds on some things that we didn't know about until he actually told me about it. Cool. In addition to that, there is some Stop. bad language in this one. So if that offends you, I apologize. So right about now is when I would ask anybody who cares to participate, if you have Facebook on your phone, if you don't mind, would you raise your hand? Ooh, exposed. Yeah. A couple people, Facebook, okay. So let's go ahead and start off with Mark Zuckerberg. And this is a chat that he had with uh, one of the people that he knew at school. I'm just going to read it to you. Yeah, so if you ever need any info about anyone at Harvard, just ask. I have over 4,000 emails, pictures, addresses, and SNS. A rejected friend asked, what? How'd you manage that one? And he said, people just submitted it. I don't know why. They trust me. Dumb fucks. <laughs> now, of note with this conversation is he did come forward during an interview, and he said, I don't think I should be judged by this because now I know better than to make fun of my customers. And it was a very rude thing to say about these people who use Facebook. But of note, he did not mention that, well, the tool itself is pretty toxic, and their methods are pretty toxic, and uh, still using his product is still a bad idea. So he didn't put any of that in there, but he was very apologetic about whoever he offended, uh, just for the words that he said. Also, so, es ist real. Also hat er zugegeben, dass er geil. Warte mal, ist Google Plus auf Gmail und YouTube schon, oder? Da kriegt man automatisch einen mit. Things 
because they are able to advertise to you through these tools. I would so gerne wie das Score auf meinem Inventar beim Laufen Haben wir das schon gesehen? Also die kenne ich. Ich muss kurz mal nachschauen, ob ich das Video schon gesehen habe. Haha. Ich weiß nicht, woher die kamen, aus welchem Talk da. Geil, wie er jetzt, wo es um äh, Israel so, und den ganzen Israel Kram geht, so zögert bei äh, archive.is. Uh, a whole bunch of Marines were having um, 
sexual relations with other Marines, taking pictures of these young ladies, and then trading and swapping the photos. They had hundreds and hundreds of photos that they were trading on Facebook and so on and so forth, taking pictures and passing them around. Uh, huge em embarrassment for the military. Uh, a lot of these guys are in trouble or getting in trouble or having uh, the book thrown at them as we speak right now. Uh, now was not really the choice time to be engaging in this behavior, and it is also not exactly appropriate for them, but uh, I guess they're learning. And then our buddies at the Islamic State, they decided to go around and start finding U.S. military accounts with poor security and start breaking into them and using them uh, to post jihadi messages about what they were doing. Uh, in addition to that, uh, these groups have operated by looking for open social media accounts, making friends with people's kids, uh, connecting with different people around the world, and then gathering that information because the idea was, we're going to find these folks, we're going to get as much information as we can about them, and then eventually we're going to execute an attack. And so they have looked for people's families, they've looked for their kids, they've looked for people who are active duty military, and they've looked for specific hashtags and such, so that if you're doing something like posting thin blue line stuff if you're in law enforcement, or you're posting yellow ribbon campaign stuff if you're in the military, well, they're looking for that so that they can make friends with those folks and eventually cause them harm. And of course, when you use passwords like one, two, three, let me in, you're not keeping two factor authentication, and so on and so forth, of course they end up breaking into this stuff. Now, Just FYI, generally, I follow a gentleman who talks about Syria. Is everybody familiar with the fact that right now, Syria is in the middle of a huge war? Some, some folks know about the war, maybe a little bit. Okay, so we're going to talk about it for a few seconds, because it's good to have a ground for what we're about to go into, so you have a better idea. And if you didn't know, I'm fairly certain that right there in the corner, uh, I believe a Syrian flag. So. In Syria right now, there's a huge civil war. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the Vietnam War, the Vietnam War was kind of the first war where we had actual news cameras go out with soldiers and film stuff, and you would actually be able to see the battlefield. They said the Vietnam War was the first battlefield that we ever brought into our home. Because you could sit down and you could watch these guys standing in the jungle shooting rifles, you could see them eating food, you would see the helicopters flying overhead. We had actual news following along with these fights. Uh, today, the war fighters overseas have fan clubs, okay? So you have people like Gibby, you have people like Motorola, uh, Motorola not being the company, but Motorola being the war fighter who is currently dead. Uh, he was killed in an attack, but uh, dead. he was a Russian soldier who worked radios Earned the the false line Motorola while he was in the Russian military and then went into Syria and started fighting. And you have young ladies who were snipers like a wife. Uh, I believe every single person I'm listening to about right now has all died. Uh, Gibby was blown up by a RPG rocket that was filled with gasoline. So he was actually burned to death uh, after it struck. It's a Russian mission that hit the building filled it up with gas and then that um, but just me being able to tell you these things kind of show oh. you that the war has gotten to the point where you can literally sit there and watch and find out what's going on within minutes and in addition to that if you want to be able to watch these people operate while they wear their GoPros and they fight and you want to see the actual war happening in real, real time you can do that now and again like I said they all have fan clubs so Ivan Sidorenko, he died in an IED last, last year um, during a patrol. This gentleman right here, he gets on Twitter and he says, does anyone know where this place is on Wikimapia? And a whole bunch of people on 4chan yeah, look at this okay, picture, this found the video. Nicht noch mal sehen, ich muss ein bisschen vorspulen. Spulen. Ich weiß nicht, in irgendeiner Folge haben wir schon mal gesehen. Ich weiß es gerade nicht in Weise. Okay. 
Then, of course, they had to throw one of those in at the end. So, you might think, well, maybe that's a one-off. So, they decided to do it again. And at this point, they go in and find another rebel training video, and Sidorenko sends them a little information, and they start tracking all the stuff down and getting information on the items in the background. So, as you can see within the videos, right there in the background, they can see these towers that are used for the power lines. So they start doing the math on how big these power lines are for it to be this much of the power line in the picture. Yeah, that's what I've also seen. Power lines, fortune. It probably only lacks time or maybe just a little bit of desire to take whatever information that you're putting up online and start using that to gather information about for whatever purpose they might have. Now, here, you're probably not going to live in fear right now of a Russian colonel calling in an airstrike on your home because you posted something stupid on Facebook. We're just, that's not us. We don't have to worry about that right now. Okay? But, we do need to worry about somebody deciding they're going to sit down and use the information that you're posting to track down your home, track down your family, and cause you harm, or cause your family harm. And with the way things are going right now, it is entirely possible for somebody to go and look at this oh. and decide that they're going das ist nicht das Loch, to kidnap dachte, your daughter das ist Haha. and Fuck, wo bin ich denn hier? stab her. Because why? Because it's happened overseas. Uh, in France, they had two police officers at home, and a gentleman broke into the home, and this was before France was allowing the police officers to take their firearms home. So this gentleman breaks into the home, kills both the husband as well as the wife, and then takes their toddler and gets himself up on the Twitter live stream, and films himself with the knife and the child, asking Twitter to vote on how he should kill the little kid. Well, before he's able to do that, enough people show up and they end up breaking into the home and they, uh, they eliminate the threat. However, the fact of the matter is that that is not outside the realm of, outside of the realm of possibility for that to happen here. Because, again, you've seen it overseas, and if it happened overseas, it can definitely happen here. Now, as you remember, at the very beginning of this talk, I asked if anybody had phone applications for things like Facebook. Now, the reason why I ask this, and for some of you this may not be applicable, but again, this is the exact same training that I give our officers that I'm giving to you. Many of these tools record your conversation. Facebook, they record your conversation. When asked about it, what do you record? They said, we're not going to tell you that it's proprietary information. However, rest assured that we are not advertising. So I hope that that, in some way, makes you feel good. Because it doesn't make me feel good. Uh, Google does admit that the recording that they do of your devices is for advertising. Um, hmm. Some of these places claim hmm. that the information that is pulled from these recordings is in some way either hashed or encrypted and is not available to employees there. Now, I disagree with this, and having spoken to somebody who actually worked there, I have been vindicated and being told, no, it's, it's available for people and they are able to do it. Uh, the way it was explained to me was one of the big perks of working at a place like Facebook when you sit down is they come to you and they tell you, uh, if you like to stalk people or read all their emails or you want to know what they're doing with their life, this is a great job to do all that stuff. It's awesome. You know everything mm. about everybody. That was sort of the selling point of if you come work for us, you can do all of this stuff. So let's talk about David Barksdale for a minute. That's a great segue into this gentleman. Uh, circa 2010, David Barksdale, working at Google, uh, has a proclivity for young girls between the ages of 14 and maybe 16. That's sort of his, his upper limit on how old he likes his women, uh, and he starts sending them messages. Find girls, talk to them. 
sends them messages, starts reading their email, going through all of their communications, uh, locating their boyfriends, from Facebook locating or their boyfriends' accounts, and then pulling phone numbers and threatening to make phone calls and asking these young ladies for all sorts of stuff. Now, this went on for a while until one of the parents was finally able to get a hold of somebody and get it shut down. And well, at this point, it goes up into the news. And David Barsdale is brought up and they say, well, nothing he did was sexual. It was never sexual. So we fired him. And, th and it it's okay. okay. But the amount of data that he had on these young ladies and the amount of information that he had demonstrates that they had access to what amounts to everything. And he was able to see all of it. Now they said that they have increased logging and can pay better attention to what's going on. Okay. Maybe nicht die Diamanten aus. Now, ich sollte mal ein bisschen I was told gehen, wahrscheinlich. that David Barksdale did not make his interest in young girls in any way a secret. And that he went to a party that was held uh, at a some snow resort, some kind of ski resort. And at that ski resort, there was free drinks provided. He decided to get himself real lit. And after doing so, he then went out onto the slopes looking for 14 to 16 Sharpness 4 kann er wohl drei Schläge in den Creeper töten. Letzte Woche sagt er war das, das Video ist von 2018, ja gut, keiner weiß, wann der Vortrag war. Das ist echt krass, also der Browser bringt mein Laptop mehr ins Schwitzen als der Minecraft Server. Browser sind echt solche Performance Killer.
So at this point is when I would urge you, if you're ever in a situation in which you're going to be around or with people who are going to be doing an investigation or uh, potentially a uh, interview with a victim or so on and so forth, take your phone, leave it at your desk, leave it with somebody else, but don't take it into the room with said victim and offer to that person, hey, if you have the opportunity, hey, can, do, do you mind if we take your cell phone and we can take that out of the room while we call? Because you don't know what's on their phone either. And if not, then they want to keep the phone, then that's fine, but that's what I would start with there. Now let's talk about some of these data aggregation sites that people search. Is everybody here familiar with these? Yeah? You go to it, you type in a name, or you maybe you type in an address or a phone number or whatever partial information you have, and it builds sort of a, a web of information about a whole bunch of people so that you have access to, uh, if you have maybe a child's name, put in the child's name and then you can find the parents, the brothers, the sisters, the grandma, grandpa, you find out all the addresses they've ever lived at, whatever cars they've owned, so on and so forth. If you did not know, this is very, very powerful information. Now the first thing most people will tell you is to go to these things, put in your own name, and then down at the bottom hit that button that says report and say, I don't want you to have my information, blah, 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 this is me, here's the links, get rid of this stuff. Now the reason why I warn you against this is because that moves you from the maybe pile to the yes, we for sure have this person pile. Okay? You will never get rid of this stuff. At this point in time, until they change the laws, they are going to post information about everyone. Ich habe das Gefühl, dass Sharpness 3 besser ist als Sharpness 4. Okay? There is tons of information available. Oder ist es meine romischen, äh, romischen Zahlenskills so eine Sache? Uh, here in Chandler, we have the Chandler's most wanted two individuals. Asim Hart, he's still, they're still looking for him. But then he also had a uh, accomplice. And they were involved in a murder out here, if you don't know. Uh, they went in to do a sort of a knockover. They were going to pretend to buy drugs. But instead of buying the drugs, they were just going to rob the place. Uh, they no, you don't, Gabe. A young gentleman who had nothing to do with anything. He was just sitting around on the couch playing video games. And uh, so they killed him because he was there. And there was no drugs and there was no money. They made a mistake. And so they murdered this guy and then took off. Uh, one of the gentlemen, long story short, they both get away. And they break up going opposite directions. So let's put it that way. One of those gentlemen... Nobody can find him. So I got on the people search and the people finder and the true people search and all these other tools to start building on that. Now, if you don't know how most people operate, what are things that we need? Food, water, shelter, and especially you need shelter because you need to be able to hide from the cops. There are people actively looking for you, right? You're being hunted. And at that point, it becomes even more important that you don't have interactions with law enforcement. You don't have interactions with border patrol. You have to be very careful where you head so that you don't end up in a situation where somebody checks your ID, right? So this gentleman takes off and I pull all the information and the first thing that I realize is, well, everybody that he knows has some sort of connection to Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York. All of his connections. Every single person has an address or a previous address to Brooklyn. That's sort of the name that just keeps coming back up. To this Brooklyn. So then, I look and I find out that shortly after he disappears, a whole bunch of family members move back to Brooklyn. So that's weird. That's suspicious. So looking further, I start pulling those addresses and I find out that one of the addresses turns out to also happen to be uh, what I thought at the time was government housing. I was under the impression that it was, but it was not. Uh, it was actually housing provided to people who work for a certain union, and if you work for that group, then you get access to housing as part of your benefits for living out there. But I didn't know this. I was under the impression it was government housing. So looking at all of these things and who was living there and what kind of area they were in, they had essentially created a small nest. And the only reason why you would create a small nest is if you're hiding people there, if you're needing to support somebody. You need multiple people, you need multiple people to be able to work to support one person in a place so extensive who can't work can't get a job and has to be very careful where they operate. So I took that information and I handed it over and I said, I am fairly certain that this person is located here. And they said, yeah, us too. Surprise, surprise, that's where we think they are too. 
And lo and behold, a few weeks later, that individual finally crawls out from under a rock and goes to buy some weed, and it turns out to be an undercover cop from New York. And upon doing so, he gets yanked up. And now Yank. he is one of the duo who is currently in custody, and we're just waiting to pick up the other one. So, these tools, especially if you have an analytical mindset and you're familiar with the way some of this stuff operates, is very, very powerful, very useful. Useful, useful for investigations. It's useful for studying people's movements. Ah, Chunkladen is not more than so on point. Schauen wir mal auf die CPU-Auslastung. Aha. 115, 120. Ja. Wie gut geht das Block abbauen? Das geht noch. Wahrscheinlich äh, ist der irgendwo im Rum Speed Fly hacken und deswegen laden die Chunks nicht mehr ganz so schnell. Aber an sich äh, ist die Performance noch absolut akzeptabel. Now, of course, social media, in general, makes it easy to build connections with people, share your photos with friends, or your family members, and catch up with people that you have a connection It's fantastic. It's great. Now, the problem is that it's also a powerful tool, and it can be used by law enforcement, and that's bad guys, or by the bad guys, to track law enforcement, the military, so on and so forth, and their family and friends. Okay? Regardless of what side of the fence you're on, this is for all intents and purposes, a weapon. There are many methods and tools available that make it simple to follow accounts from disparate sites, locate victims, and to build databases that can reveal extremely private information. Um, for somebody like me, I can use it for all sorts of stuff. Uh, I used social media back in the day for my job. Uh, I had access to tons and tons of stuff, and it wasn't unheard of accounts on people that were this thing. Hey, I, I have a person, I need their social media information, please send it to me, and I would get a packet. Some of that stuff has changed post-Snowden. Now that Snowden's done, things have, they have actually changed. There are, there are differences in how a lot of this stuff operates, if you're not familiar or you don't know. So, going back to our questions up here, let's review these one more time, and then we're going to talk about Mark Hamill, not the Jedi. Hmm. We're going to identify one safety concern with social media, right? We're going to learn what settings to manage to enhance social media security. And we're going to describe one event relevant to social media that is affecting law enforcement. Going all the way back down here. Well, <coughs> one of the main concerns is social media is an intelligence gathering for like on a target. Right? If you have social media or you have any of these tools, it's very simple to take that data aggregated and eventually turn it into actionable intelligence that can be used. A, being blown up by a bunch of Russians. Or B, being tracked down because you were a criminal. Or C, having some guy track your family, find out where you're located, kill the husband and the wife, and then sit there on Twitter while deciding what to do with the child, just like what happened in France. Do not allow targeted ads. Buy GPS coordinates for yourself or overshare, and this is the most important one. Having the GPS coordinates, having uh, targeted Ooh, ads, any of this stuff is not nearly as bad as the amount of oversharing that happens with data. So, uh, normally I have a bunch of guys who have their arms crossed, and they're huge and muscly, and they're SWAT guys, and they've got rifles and pistols, and they're the toughest dudes you'll ever meet, and they're super strong, and so on and so forth, and I have to remind them, you're not the target. Nobody's going to look at you and say, yeah, you know what? It would be really awesome if I got my ass kicked today. That's what I want to do. Because that's not what they're going to do. They're going to look at that guy, and they're going to go, okay, that dude could probably beat me up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check his social media, and I'm going to find his 13-year-old daughter who's doing the hashtag thin blue line and so on and so forth on her Twitter, and then I'm going to go for that because that's a soft target, and I'm not going to get my ass kicked. And that is the most important thing for those people, and it's the most important thing for anybody else sitting there to realize is that oftentimes you're right, you're not the target, but the people around you may be. So, also keep in mind, people can read your messages, and they may not be friendly. Every single one of the bad shoots 
even the ones that were considered by law good shoots that have occurred on the East Coast, every single one of those law enforcement departments were broken into within hours. Not days, not weeks, hours of the news reporting on an individual dying. Immediately, people were in their records, they were in their data, they were in their evidence, and they were in all of the information relevant to the police officers, like their home addresses, they were pulling information on spouses, they pulled a ton of information on every single one of those officers. So that is another thing to consider. The minute something happens or occurs, or you end up in the news, potentially, somebody is going to go after you. Now, example. Michael Hamill was known as the hot cop, sexy cop alive, so on and so forth. Uh, now, he was fired for anti-Semitic comments he made in the movie. Now, when you go into law enforcement in general, somebody will sit down and they will take a look at your social media. And a lot of people get real offended by that. Oh, you don't need to excuse me, see my social media. Why do you need to see this stuff? Right. The reason they need to be able to see this stuff is to find out if you're going to because guess what? People are doing things online, believe it or not. So Hamill here decides, as a kid, to jump on his Facebook and just post oven jokes, anti-Semitic jokes. Uh, he posts all kinds of stupid stuff. His whole social media is just full of stuff. But nobody ever noticed or looked. So then he gets his beard trimmed real nice. He's got his full outfit done. He's got his uniform on. Boys for hurricane in Florida, and while he's out there, uh, he ends up in a few photos helping people, where apparently he looks very well dressed, very trim, uh, handsome. Handsome is the word, right? And so people put it all over social media, all over the place. He's the hottest cop in the world. They start calling his department, asking him to come and arrest them, so that they can be put in cuffs by the hottest cop in the world. <laughs> he starts reveling in it. Uh, gets on Twitter, starts posting, communicating with people, so on and so forth. Well, it took one person to actually go in and start looking at his background and seeing all of his old posts and so on and so forth. And the next thing you know, he's lost his job and his entire department is a laughing stock. And in addition to that, there's an investigation that's launched because they went through his social media and found out that he was a super scumbag and doing stupid stuff. So there is a reason why they ask to look at your social media to check these things and so on and so forth. So all of your social media linked devices, including phones, and I'm super excited about this. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, for anybody who has an Apple phone, your if you open your settings, you'll see that no longer Facebook, Facebook is no longer in there as a, a default app that's married to the operating system. Apparently, they have now removed. So that's a fantastic first step, getting that out there. Now, they're now treating Facebook, Twitter, so on and so forth as separate applications from the way that they had uh, sort of just welded it. Also man merkt jetzt schon was hier von, dass nicht mehr so super flüssig uh, läuft alles hier. Phones, tablets, vehicles and otherwise, they're each pushing your data up to advertisers and others who may or may not have your best interest at heart. Case in point, Amazon Alexa. Anybody here have an Amazon Alexa? No. This really isn't the crowd. In some of my other talks, <laughs> you know, I, I do this talk and I, and I say, who has an Amazon Alexa? And I see half the room go, me, I've got one. And then I talk about this part and everybody goes, oh, shit, I got to sell my Amazon Alexa. So Amazon Alexa, there was one in a home. There was a murder within the home. Amazon Wo ist denn der, der Gudem hin? Sterben die von alleine? Oh, vielleicht greifen uh, Skelett, right now, äh, Skelette und so, greifen die vielleicht an. Long enough for there to have been a murder, for however long till that murder was found out about, and then for it now to go into court case and for them to start pursuing that information. Okay, 
pretty long amount of time for them to have what amounts to plain voice. Facebook, they take over your microphone. Google, they take over your microphone. And they can listen to your home and your private conversations. Games and tools will often contain components designed to mine other applications in your phone. Where I also have to explain to you, if it says, can I see your contacts? Can I get access to your microphone? Or uh, can I look through your camera and your photos so that you can play Candy Crush? Not something that you want to really give that access for, okay? It's generally not worth it for you to give up complete control over your device in exchange for some kind of Skinner box. <coughs> Just keep it in mind as you're using your phone, okay? Now, you have little control over what is done with your data or where it goes. And it's obvious that they don't want you to know what is being done with your data. It is obvious that they would rather keep that, that mystique of, well, we're here to protect you, we're here to watch your stuff, we're here to keep an eye on it, so on and so forth. We know better than you do, and we need this information so we can sell to you. Uh, be cognizant in everything that you do in the presence of your device, because you could be potentially be mined for information. Okay. Now, my final recommendations here are, in a perfect world, don't use social media. Monitor your friends and family for inappropriate use of social media, especially kids. Monitor your friends. If you have children, if you have grandkids, uh, <coughs> occasionally go in and do some searches. Everybody in this room is probably more than smart enough to, to look at these people's searches and so on and so forth. At least get an idea of what your threat footprint is. Uh, in the military, you would hear it used as like war games. You hear terms like war games. You sit down figure out potentially where can you be attacked, who can attack you, what kind of enemy you might face, what kind of force that they're going to bring to bear. You can do the exact same thing. You can look at what your social media footprint and so on and so forth is, and then use that information to think to yourself, okay, if I was a bad guy, is there enough data here for me to execute an attack? Oh, my kid over here is posting pictures of him at the ball game. Well, pull that picture down and see, oh, he's posting GPS coordinates with timestamps. So they know that he is always on Wednesdays at baseball, and this is the exact location he's at every single time. You can do these exact same things and figure this stuff out for yourself. And then do not interact casually with people you do not know, because guess what? People lie on the internet. Mm -hmm. They will pretend to be somebody else. And you can run into that. They will pretend to be a 12-year-old child, make friends with your 13-year-old child, and they are not a 12-year-old child. <coughs> and it feels like, for many of us who grew up when the internet was first coming out, I was taught to never post pictures of myself online. But for most of the, the children who have been bored post-Facebook, that advice is no longer given. People do not understand that you shouldn't meet somebody at Walmart because it's not going to make you a viral star. Well, it might, but not in the way that you want it to be. So I'm going to close that one down, and then we're going to move on to Tails. Does anybody have any questions or anything? Uh, yes. So you said that we should not put in our name to the people searches and then report that it should, that that is us, right? Don't report. Well, so again, if you report, because you can, and you can go in there and you can say, hey, this is my information, I'm confirming that it's real, and here's, sometimes they'll ask for a copy of your driver's license, and then they ask, okay, well, with all of this information, now I'm going to take this off. But the thing is, is that many of these um, companies, and I'm gonna use the term incestuous, they're very, very closely linked, and they operate in a, such a way that maybe that company that you just contacted is going to take that off, but they're immediately going to report to all the subsidies, subsidiaries, and they're going to say, okay, this data is real. Here's a picture of the driver's license. Here's everything we need. This person is the person that we have. All your data is just going to show up on another list. And it's like playing whack-a-mole. Does that make more sense? Right. So then what, what should we do to get ourselves off that? You can't. That's the problem. And I don't think that that's going to be able to be done until we start looking laws in relation to how this stuff is used. And I don't think that they're going to look at the laws until a judge or uh, somebody major, like a politician, gets popped 
by one of these things, and then they're going to look at it. I think that's the only point that, that we will see something like that actually become a problem. Because for many of us, we look at it and go, oh, this is bad, but you, you can't do anything about it. So you get your records from public records. Yeah. This is already happening to judges in Texas. They, they were judges who, through social media, were stalked and killed. So then, would it be better to opt out, or would it be better to not? Because then at least people who are using these are not able to like search for, say, an address as easily. I, it, it, no, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that it would be even remotely difficult. You're not even setting up roadblocks. I mean, it's nothing. Because you have so many. I, I gave you three web pages, but if you go online, you can find them. tens of hundreds. And the ones that I gave you may not even be the ones that you find just because of your search profile. When you actually sit down and Google tries to feed you stuff that you're going to see, you're going to find completely different companies anyway. So, no. It, I, I don't even know if it matters. Yes. So when Facebook got busted for all their stuff and Mark Zuckerberg was up on Capitol Hill, uh -huh. a couple days after that, they came out and they said that, oh no, we made tools for you so you can download your data for your Facebook and Instagram. But I don't remember hearing them saying, you know what, we're going to delete your data when you do that. Right, no, they don't. And that's because most of it is actually... Is Everybody here familiar machen, with oder? the term LexisNexis? 2018. Yes. Okay, so, schon so dass, now, dass man das if you want to talk about this, then we'll talk about it. Konnte so, Facebook has wirklich. a direct connection to LexisNexis. If you don't know what LexisNexis is, LexisNexis is a database with all of your data. They call it the shadow profile. Now, if you're wondering, how detailed is the LexisNexis shadow profile? Well, it's detailed enough that certain financial companies will use that in lieu of an actual credit report because it's more accurate. Uh, law enforcement uses LexisNexis all day. I have a LexisNexis account. It was awesome. Back pre-Snowden, LexisNexis combined with some of the other accessible tools that we had, fantastic for getting information. So they're not going to delete your data because that data has been placed into a, a database that by law enforcement, by intelligence agencies, by everybody. Everybody has access to it. And again, it's called the, the shadow profile. And the thing is hyper, hyper accurate. Way better than credit reports, way better than... Yeah, that's the thing, like, the, the normal person, the person that's not a tech kind of person. Mm -hmm. they, they immediately assume, well, I can download my data, now they're going to delete it. <laughs> so, and then they're not. Exactly. Yeah, they're absolutely. Every wrong. single news story I saw said the same thing. Yeah. And uh, uh, mind you, when you look at these companies, again, let's remember these these news companies. They work with Facebook. They advertise amongst each other. They're all interconnected. You know, the one company washes somebody else's back, and that company washes somebody else's back, and so on and so forth. And they all take care of each other. And when Mark Zuckerberg got up there, and he was like. Yeah, I have a lot of data, and they gave it to me. And these people said, well, what are you going to do with it? And he was like, I don't know, we'll make it available to people. Here, you can look at it. But nobody really cared, and they didn't make any actionable changes, and they didn't pull anything down to say, hey, you need to delete this stuff, because they're not going to. Give it a uh, non-breaking order, oh, not protection, no, not schlecht. Now, we're getting sort of into the, the, the future of... Like, we're future casting here. No, no, I understand, but we are future casting here. Sesame Credit, China. Let's look at China. Sesame Credit is China's social media that they are designing specifically for deciding what you do with your life. And you can look up Sesame Credit, and what it consists of is social media accounts that are designed to allow you to report somebody. So let's say that I'm sitting here and. This gentleman right here in the front posts something on social media, and he says something like, not really happy with the party today. The Communist Party is doing the wrong thing. Well, I can raise my status and gain credit points by reporting him to the party. So I go on the social media, and I hit report, and I get points for reporting him. Now, if my child is playing video games too much, and Sesame Credit finds out that my kid plays video games too much, I lose points because I'm being a poor parent. 
And they, they are using this Crazy. all over China, and they are developing this process to allow them to decide what happens. So if you have a poor Sesame Credit support, you will not be allowed to have a public-facing job like a um, tour guide. Because potentially, as a tour guide, if you're showing a weakness and a, uh, a, a possibility that you're going to betray the party, then we don't need you touring around America. So this Sesame Credit system, with them building this as a method of being able to track people, and it's, it's in use right now, it has not been deployed countrywide, but the way that they're deploying this thing is they're taking uh, groups like, uh, the, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but it's the Ugars, the Ugars, they're the, the, they're the local Muslim population for China. They're taking these groups and they're putting them into re-education camps, and then because it's very difficult to take these groups and give them IDs, they're using this as an alternative IT system. So they can ID you, take pictures of you, add you to this account, and then they can give you and take away points. And that decides whether or not you can get jobs, whether or not you can go for education, whether or not your children can get an education, and what jobs your children can have, and so on and so forth. And you get points for reporting people for poor behavior or anti-communist actions. And the whole thing, again, it's called Sesame Credit. You can look it up. We've talked about it previously in some of my other videos. But that, that method of public control over what it is that you're doing is what I feel the future of using these tools will be like for you. So is there some kind of repercussion if somebody falsifies that information? You know, I've never seen that discussed, and I'm not sure. So I don't know because I've never even seen that brought up in any of their discussions. Everything that I've read about it has been colored in a very positive light, where to us it sounds very dystopic, right? Like, I hear this and I think, that's, that's 1984 style, that's the worst thing I could possibly think of in terms of, here's an opportunity for you to put the real numbers right on their arm, and you don't even have to put them in a fence, because their fence is digital now. They'll, they don't know that they're grazing in the field. But the entire Sesame Credit system is what they would like to eventually implement here. And they talked about it. So if you're interested in that topic and you'd like to see what's happening in China, I definitely recommend that you read it. But again, you're going to see it in rose tinted glasses because they're only going to give you positive information about it. Sieht so aus, als wäre das Video langsam vorbei. No? Okay, cool. Aber dieses System, äh, Hilfe, ich könnte mir vorstellen, dass, ähm, dass es ein bisschen toxic werden könnte zwischen den einzelnen Bürgern, wenn man Punkte dafür kriegt, die anderen runterzuziehen, das ist sicher, ich weiß nicht, es könnte eventuell schädlich sein für den Gemeinschaftsgeist. Yikes. <lacht> äh. Was? Soll es überhaupt weg? Ja schon, oder? Ähm, ja, äh, das war Aaron Jones mit Social Media Safety. Und der Server ist immer noch nicht abgekratzt, obwohl wir hier so viele Kühe haben. Also momentan performt der Server noch äh, echt gut. Ähm, ja, wir werden in der nächsten Folge wahrscheinlich noch ein bisschen weiter benchmarken, aber... Das war's dann erstmal für diese Episode und dann sehen wir uns in der nächsten Folge dieser Dauerwerbesendung.